Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Welcome to Temple Emmanuel on a very special evening marking the 10th anniversary of our Department of Lifelong Learning. Tonight's service, infusing the beauty of our sanctuary worship with the spirit of our Shabbat Kodesh family services, brings together every generation of our congregation in celebration of Shabbat and Hinei Matov Umanayim Shevet Achim Gam Yachad. Indeed, how good, how beautiful it is to be together. I'm Rabbi Davidson, joined on the Bima by Rabbis Ehrlich and Tick Brill, by Cantor Glasman, by our Director of Lifelong Learning, Saul Kaiserman, and Associate Director, Rachel Brumberg, both of whom we honor tonight, by our Choir Director, Scott Warren, bassist Davis Lismi and violinist Meg Okura, and representing our leadership, the chair of our Parents Association, Michelle Goldstein. And we'll be led tonight by students in our school, including these representatives of our teen programs, Michael Ray Reese, Meredith Silfen, Ethan Haytu, and Jesse Millman. And now to kindle our Shabbat lights, we call forward all those members of our congregation here who have graduated our high school program over the past 10 years, including these four who have returned as staff members, Elizabeth Cooper, Max DeLott, Danielle Greenberg, and Teddy Kleinman. And they'll lead us on page 74. Come, let us welcome Shabbat. May its radiance warm our hearts as we kindle these tapers. Light, light is the symbol of God's presence in our lives. The eternal one is our light and our salvation. Light is the symbol of the holiness within each of us. The human spirit is the light of God. Light is the symbol of the Torah's teachings, for the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is a light. Light is the symbol of Israel's mission. As it is written, I have made you a covenant people to serve as a light to the nations. Therefore, in the spirit of our ancient tradition, that hallows and unites Israel in all lands and all ages, we kindle the lights of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kirishanu bemitzvotam Vetsivanu lehaa 
We welcome Shabbat. Now let's welcome one another. Please turn to those around you, in front of you, behind you, to your left, to your right. Greet each other. Wish each other Shabbat Shalom. Every day is a blessing, a new beginning from God. We wake up each morning, breathe fresh air, and conquer the day before us. However, I was not really aware of that until I experienced a huge disappointment as I went through the college application process this year. I was deferred from my dream school, which for a serious student and a hardworking teen is a big deal. Suddenly, I had so many unanswered questions. What was in store for me? Where did my future take me now? This experience was a wake-up call for me. I realized that it was time for a new beginning. I needed to perceive things differently and take each day as a blessing. I woke up every morning excited and ready to conquer the day. I had to make a new plan for how to achieve my ambitions. I focused on how to turn my deferral into an acceptance and succeeded. Shabbat can be a time to take a step back from our active and hurried lives, to reflect on all we have to be grateful for, and to make a new beginning. We gather here together at Emmanuel to begin our prayers with the Bar Chu. Let us take this time as a community to praise God because God offers us each and every day a new beginning. And so we rise to sing the call to worship. And as we do so, we invite our students in religious school who will lead us later in Shema and Ve'ahavta. Please turn to page two for Baruch Hu. Yalla la 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 in English on the bottom of page three, please join me. Infinite as is your power, even so is your love. It may be seen through the history of our people Israel, through laws and ethical precepts, through statutes and ordinances. You've led us in the ways of righteousness and brought us to the light of truth. Therefore, at our lying down and our rising up, we will meditate on the Torah's teachings finding within it the inspiration and guidance for our daily lives. May your love never depart from our hearts. We praise you, God. You have revealed your love through our people, Israel. And so we rise and say together, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai is a prayer that shows that we have certain actions which we need to do to be grateful towards God because God took us out of Egypt and God has done many many things for us we do things like pray we rise up and we think about God when we lie down we think about God we love with our hearts and our might which it says throughout the Vehafta. I wanted to talk about someone who I am grateful for someone who I'm sure we are all grateful for parents I don't know if you know what this is, but I'm adopted, which means that I come from another country. My mom spent time preparing visas and trying to get to Europe, which is where I'm from, and she had to spend a lot of time preparing my room and getting me clothes, because I think she knew that I would like them, I don't know. <laughs> she spent a lot of her time, and I am so, so thankful that I am here and I have a life with her. So in order to show that I am grateful, I respect the rules of her house, spend time with her, and love her unconditionally, which is something you should all do with your parents. God has been a parental figure and a protector for us all. So to show respect for God, like we do with our parents, we follow the rules of the Ve'ah Hafta. והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווה היום על לבדך ושילמת לבניך ודיברת הפעם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ושפך ותקומך וקשרתם לאות הידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ביתם כראשים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם באלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם
As part of the A-team, I was tasked with helping assign meaning to a prayer the students would sing in tefillah, and the prayer I chose was Micha Mocha. Micha Mocha comes from Exodus, right after Moses and God separate the seas and allow for Israel to escape from the Pharaoh in, his, in Egypt. The Israelites sang Micha Mocha as a way to celebrate their freedom and Moses as God's miracle in the separation of the seas. To explain this to students, I got some very nice looking party hats and gave them out to the students and we all sang Micha Mocha as if we too were Israelites in celebration of a miracle. That's the connection I wanted the kids to make, that every time we do this prayer at Temple Emmanuel, it's a celebration of freedom. on page 10. Shia Magain 
Baruch atah Adonai, Magen Abraham, Vezrat Sarah. Please be seated. We continue together in the middle of page 11. God of ages past and future, God of this day, as you were with our mothers and fathers, be with us as well. As, as you strengthen them, us. strengthen us. As you were their guide, be ours as well. Grant that we too may be bearers of your teaching, teachers of your truth. Then our tradition shall endure and our people Israel will live from mother and father to daughter and son and all who follow them. One generation comes, one generation passes. Each of us is a link in the endless chain of our heritage. Students of the Torah become teachers. Our faith and ideals endure. Our people and values live on. The word peace can be used to explain a state of tranquility, a period of accord between governments or a personal acceptance of oneself. With constant wars and political and social tensions, it is impossible to have world peace in 2017. At the same time, it's difficult to find peace within our own selves or even find time to focus on that. As a young kid coming to Temple Emmanuel, my parents only expected me to attend through my bat mitzvah. But I still wasn't at peace with how I felt about my religion, so I stayed involved throughout high school in hopes that being at Emmanuel could help me figure this out. As a freshman, I was still very unsure about my interests, my passions, and my values. Now as a senior, looking back at my time at Emmanuel, I have found peace with my relationship with my Judaism. I came to the realization that for me, being Jewish means tapping into my Jewish ethics and morals in my everyday life. Because of Temple Emmanuel and all the lessons I've learned here, Jewish values such as tzedakah and tikkun ulam have become driving forces in my daily life. I have even become at peace with the fact that I don't know how I feel about God. Lastly, though I'm nervous about moving away from home next year, I have found great peace in knowing that I can always turn to my Jewish community for support. While it's important to think about what we can do to make peace in our world, it can be just as important to think about how we can find peace for ourselves. O God of peace, let all people strive together to create enduring peace. Bless us with the vision of your peace. We praise the eternal God who blesses our people Israel and all people with the love of peace. As we come to this moment in our service, the blessing of renewal. We recognize that each one of us enters this sanctuary with different needs. Some come into our congregation with joys, and others with personal challenges, disappointments, or illness. But all seek the quiet of this moment and the promise of healing. If there is someone that you are praying for who is in need of healing, please share their names with us now so that they may become part of our prayers as well. Please turn to your service handout and join the cantor in singing the prayer for healing.
continue with the prayers of our own hearts. Dear friends, the story that we are celebrating tonight began 11 years ago when a group of devoted temple members, including Juliet Cooper, Rita Habes, Fran Hess of Blessed Memory, Marcy Janover, Elise Newhouse, and Onik Wolf, led by Temple President Marsha Waxman, Committee Chair Carol Greenberg, Rabbi David Posner and Rabbi Amy Ehrlich set out to reimagine Congregation Emmanuel's approach to lifelong Jewish learning. The process involved many months of collaboration and of study of current trends in Jewish education and of our own synagogue's needs. Together, they envisioned a program where children would love to learn and their parents would love to join them. And then they went in search of an educator to bring that vision to life. That master teacher is, as you know, Saul Kaiserman, our director of lifelong learning. 
Regarded as one of the most talented synagogue educators in the nation, Saul teaches the required course on Jewish education at the Reform Movement's seminary, the Hebrew Union College. Expert in curriculum development, school administration, and teacher training, he has assembled, as our students and parents can attest, the finest faculty anywhere. He created Shabbat Kodesh, a worship experience which has engaged hundreds of families through these years in learning, laughter, and song. And still he continues to experiment with new ideas and new techniques, treating our school as a laboratory for Jewish education. All his work is guided by the principle that we as Jews ought to care for the world around us and care for one another. And truly, he is concerned about each and every student and his or her interests, because he knows that if he can pique those interests, then he'll have them forever. His students love him and the program he has created, and his faculty hold him in the highest esteem. And Saul's efforts extend well beyond our religious school. His has been a critical voice in the synagogue's strategic visioning work, and he remains an invaluable resource and partner to our lay leaders, to our staff, and to me. Besides Stahl, every step of the way, as his collaborator and co-conspirator, has been our associate director of lifelong learning, Rachel Brumberg, with her extraordinary ability to implement to the finest detail their highest hopes for the program. She, in particular, has raised up a group of teens as the next generation of Jewish educators. And with them for the past six years has been Missy Bell, our director of youth learning and engagement, whose presence for our teens has been a profound gift in their lives. As she leaves us for her new position as Director of Education at B'nai Yehoshua Beth Elohim in Chicago, we take pride in that exciting achievement, knowing that the Jewish community will be better for her greater role now in its leadership. Before I invite Saul to the pulpit to deliver tonight's Devar Torah, I would share that I first met him 25 years ago on a flight from New York to Tel Aviv. The two of us were chaperoning 150 teenagers on their way to Israel for the summer. He was wearing jeans and sandals and had long hair. I was wearing a necktie. <laughs> Little did I know that 25 years later, the two of us would be partners at this wonderful synagogue. Tonight, we honor his program and his accomplishments. I'd now invite Saul, Rachel, and Missy all to join me for a moment. We present to you, on behalf of the congregation which loves you, a gift, the work of the wonderful artist, God Amalia. First, Missy, this is to you, in gratitude for your leadership of our children. Get yourself a teacher, acquire yourself a friend, teaches Pirkei Avot, and truly you have been our children's teacher and loving friend. to Saul Kaiserman, in celebration of your 10th year of leadership. Rabbi Eliezer, quoting Rabbi Hanina, said, it is the sages and the scholars who bring peace to the world. May peace surround you and prosperity dwell in your palaces.
and to you, Rachel, on this celebration of 10 years. This from Proverbs 22. Teach a child in the way he should go. And so you have. Please join me in thanking these wonderful leaders of our congregation. Earlier in the service, Michael Ray observed that every Shabbat is an opportunity to reflect back on the week that passed and become re-energized for the work ahead. Um, all week long, we work hard to achieve, to accomplish, to make a good life for ourselves, for our families, and for so many of us, for people that we don't even know. Um, thank you. Having that uh, Sabbath break kind of scheduled for us every week, make sure that we actually stop and spend time with people we love and enjoy all the fruits of our labors. We, we celebrate our achievements. We know that we didn't make everything perfect, but we make sure not to forget that at least once a week we have to say, this really is very good. In this week's Torah portion, Bahar Bahukatai, we learn about the sabbatical year just like after six days, the seventh is Shabbat, in biblical times, after every six years, the seventh year was a super Shabbat. For an entire year, the land of Israel itself was given a complete rest. There was no planting of new crops, no cultivation or harvesting. It is, in essence, a Sabbath for the land itself, just as we humans return to work rejuvenated and re-energized after a day of rest, so too the land is allowed to lie fallow and become productive once again. And in modern times, in the state of Israel, many farmers observe this law to this day. In biblical times, no doubt, the sabbatical year must have been a period of leisure and recreation for many people, but like our weekly day of rest, it must have been an occasion for the Israelites to pause and reflect on all that had been accomplished over the period of years that passed. So much would have happened over those six years. Children becoming teens, teens becoming adults, adults becoming parents, and so on. So it's fitting that we read this portion tonight when we are marking a moment in the life of this congregation. And, and I'm glad we're taking this pause to reflect because when we don't mark time in this way, we might forget to say the things that truly matter. When we say something like happy birthday or happy anniversary, remember to say thank you. I'm so grateful to you for everything that you do to, for me. I'm so glad you are in this world. And here tonight, that's what I want to say to all of you. Thank you. Thank you for making it possible for me to come home from work every day glad for the job that I have and the work that we do. Ten years ago, we started the Department of Lifelong Learning with one simple idea. Religious school shouldn't be boring. It should be something that kids and teens and their parents look forward to doing every week. And I can't tell you that we're perfect, but I can take this sabbatical moment and say, I think there are some signs we're on the right track. Our kids are not just showing up for religious school. Over the past 10 years, there have been 121 students who've had perfect attendance, almost 50 of them for two or three years. And there's two kids here tonight who didn't miss a day of religious school for five years, Brooke Obelis and Haley Melnicker. <laughs> Our students 
come outside of school hours too. They come from Moadon to do extra Hebrew in the morning. They do our Hebrew enrichment program via Skype for 20 minutes a week. They come for the student council once a month to decide where the tzedakah that we raise in the school should go. And by the way, over the past 10 years, you've raised nearly $45,000 in tzedakah. Then they come back and they work on the A-team or our leaders in our teen philanthropic committee or the teen benefit, which has raised $150,000 for American Jewish World Service. And then as you saw before, they come back as our staff and serve on our faculty and a word about our faculty as well. I'm so grateful to those of you on our faculty who started together with Rachel and me 10 years ago, every single one of you who's on our staff still after 10 years is here tonight celebrating. I'm so grateful for you to be here. And there's two people on our faculty who grew up here at Temple Emmanuel, and they also have been on our faculty for more than 10 years. They were here before I got here, Jessica Hasika and Diane Bialik. And then when our faculty leave here, they go on to do great things. They become rabbis at congregations around the country, from Massachusetts to California. Two of the members of our full-time staff have gone on to run religious schools of our own. And here. many of them have gone on to run religious schools of our own. But two are here tonight, Rabbi Rena Rivkin and Abra Lee. And thank you so much for what you've done. And then let's not forget about the parents who build sets and costumes for the Purim Spiel and run booths at the Purim Carnival, volunteer in so many other ways. Michelle Goldstein, the chair this year, has taken us to new heights that we've never been at before. But I could go on and I could point to so many people who are in this room and say thank you, my colleagues from other congregations, Joe Kay, who is here to run the, the visioning process that we had, uh, I, the, all of you who are on the women's auxiliary and the men's club and the striker center who build our programs ev all throughout the year. But I, I do want to say just two special thanks. One is to the newest full-time member of our program team, to Jackie Schreiber, who's just been doing a phenomenal job. And we just want to be so grateful. And finally, I, I have to say a thank you to Mark Heitlinger, who somehow managed to make all of these things happen all of these years, as crazy as they got. In, in just a few moments, Rabbi Davidson is going to call up here tonight the, the students who this year earned religious school with honors or become mitzvah messengers. Um, these are the kids who go above and beyond the requirements. They show up at least five, some 10, 15 times over the course of the year to programs outside of school hours. Our mitzvah messengers are the ones who commit to being here after becoming bar and bat mitzvah and continuing to volunteer in organizations around the city together with Temple Emmanuel. These young people are some of the most committed members of our congregation. And I have been so proud and so honored to have gotten to know them over the past 10 years, to gotten to know all of you, and I'm looking forward with so much anticipation to what comes next. Thank you so much for being here tonight. So I would like to invite to join me at the Ark for a special blessing of appreciation all of our mitzvah messengers and our religious school with honors students, and with them, Saul Kaiserman, Rachel Brumberg, and Missy Bell. And as they come up, I'd ask you all to please rise.
With thanks for your leadership and for the example you set for all of us, I would share these words with which the rabbis of old blessed their own teachers. May you live to see your world fulfilled. May your destiny be for worlds still to come. May you trust in generations past and yet to be. May your heart be filled with intuition and your words be filled with insight. May songs of praise ever be upon your tongue and your vision be a straight path before you. May your eyes shine with the light of holy words and your face reflect the brightness of the heavens. May your lips ever speak wisdom and your fulfillment be in righteousness, even as you ever yearn to hear the words of the Holy Ancient One of old. May God bless you and watch over you. May God always smile upon you and may God be kind to you. May God turn his face toward you and may God always bless you with peace. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our Shehechianu prayer. We continue with Alenu on page 67. Alenu le shabach la don ha kol, la teit grulal yotze breishit, shelo asanu kgoye haratzot, velo samanu kmishbochod adamba, Shelo sam chelkenu kahem, begor alenu kechol hamonam. Vanachnu koreim, umishtachabim umodim. Lifneim beginning and death is a destination and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and youth to age from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing 
from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. Life is a journey from weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again. From health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and from grief to understanding, from fear to faith. Life is a journey from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death is a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. At this time, we call to mind and bring into our hearts those cherished members of our congregation and community who died recently or at this time in years past. We remember Gloria S. Becker, Jean Budagowski, Julius Berger, Ralph Chait, Elaine Turner Cooper, Jane Pack Dessa, Belle Glick, Abraham Gordon, Leona Rabin Haggett, Harry Hyden, Stephen Richard Hertz, Richard M. J. Dell, Gertrude Kittenplan, Jean Kornfeld, Arthur Nareff, Douglas E. Nordlinger, Irving Parker, Rose Pollock, Murray Ramson, James Robbins, Bernard Rothman, Marcia Shanewald, Sidel Sherman, Shirley Warren, Marilyn Spinoza Weinberg, Elsie Weisbard, Richard W. Zerinsky, and we add to these names all of our loved ones who have died. If you're in recent mourning, we invite you to please rise. And if you are marking a yard site, the anniversary of a death, we invite you to please rise. And now we stand as one congregation to recite Mourner's Kaddish, page 72. It gadal vit kadash shemei raba, belma devrach yurte v'yamlich malchute, b'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei techo beit Yisrael, b'agala v'zman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shemei raba mivarach le'olam omei almaya, yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit ramam v'yit naseh, v'yit hadar v'yit hale v'yit halal shemei dekudusha b'rehu. Leila minko birchata vishirata, tushbechata venechamata, damiran belma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya, vechayim alenu vel kol Yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom bimramav, hu ya se shalom, alenu vel kol Yisrael vimru amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to every broken heart. Ose shalom bim ramav, huya se shalom malenu, ve hakol Yisrael ve imru imru amen. Shabbat Shalom once again. I want to extend a special welcome to students in our Introduction to Judaism class who are here with their teacher, Rabbi Peter Weintraub. We look forward to seeing you soon in the lobby for our own egg, and as you go, we would ask you to please leave your prayer books on your seat. If you have registered for the Shabbat dinner, please exit through the door to the right of the bima and proceed to Wise Hall down the stairs or elevators. There are a limited number of seats available for tonight's dinner, and if you're interested in attending, please meet Saul at the front of the sanctuary to see if we can accommodate you. Our worship continues tonight with a service for our Saviv Young Professionals community in the Bethel Chapel at 7.30, followed by a rooftop Hawaiian-themed reception. Thursday at 6, the Men's Club will host its annual meeting and the Samuel Sachs Achievement Award reception honoring Marlene Yokel and Mark Wilner. 
And looking ahead to May 30th at 6 p.m., we hope you'll join us for confirmation, which will take place during the evening service for Shavuot. More information about all of these events can be found on our website, emmanuelnyc.org. And now I'd like to invite Jason Titunik to join me in the pulpit. Tomorrow afternoon, Jason will be called to the Torah as Bar Mitzvah, and we are so proud of him. Jason, on behalf of the Women's Auxiliary, the Men's Club, and the leadership of the congregation, we present you with this beautiful Kiddush cup. We pray for you, Jason, that your life overflows with blessing, just like this cup will overflow with juice. And we also, <laughs> we also want to present you with this certificate of achievement so that you always remember this moment. And we hope you'll join us in congratulating Jason by singing Siman Tov with us. Michelle Goldstein to lead us in Kiddush on page 75. Shabbat teaches us that life is a sacred, that all work and joys can be dedicated to God, and that we may find the truest happiness in serving the Eternal One. Let us praise God with the symbol of joy as we express gratitude for all the blessings of the past week, for our lives, for our health, for our home, for our loved ones and friends, for the happiness that has come to us from our efforts. You have ennobled us by the blessing of work and given us the gift of Shabbat rest. As it is written in the Torah, six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is Shabbat to be devoted to the eternal God. Let us praise the eternal God, creator of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Baruch Atarunai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kirishanu B'mitzvotav Ratzavanu, V'Shabbat Kodcho Be'ahava U'Vratzon Inchilanu, Zikaron L'Mahaseh B'Reshit, Ki Hu Yom Join 
us in the Motsi. Baruch Atarunai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMotsi Lechem Min HaAretz. Saul, we actually have one more gift for you tonight. The Kiddush cup we used was new for tonight. A special gift for you from the congregation. May your cup always be filled to overflowing with juice <laughs> and with joy. It's not juice. <laughs> In our tradition, when we complete the study of a book of Torah, we say the words chazak, chazak, venit chazak, or in English, we are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. In a minute, we will invite you to join together as a community in chanting these words. But first, we want to celebrate a few of the ways in which we have grown stronger over the past 10 years through our community's commitment to lifelong learning. And so, if you have served on the school faculty for at least 10 years, I'd ask you to please stand and remain standing. Now remain standing, but I'd like to ask you to join with those standing if you currently are serving on our school faculty or the A-team or you ever before have served on our school faculty or A-team. If you are or were at any time a mitzvah messenger, would you please join them in rising? If tonight or ever before you earned religious school with honors as a student in our program, won't you please rise? If you celebrated your confirmation at Temple Emmanuel, please stand. <laughs> if you've ever traveled to Israel with Temple Emmanuel, or to New Orleans, or to Alabama, or to Europe, or if you're thinking about traveling us in 2018 <laughs> on the next Family Israel trip, Please rise. <laughs> if you have volunteered at the Purim Carnival or any other religious school event, would you please rise? If you're not standing already and you currently go to religious school or you ever went to religious school here, <laughs> won't you please rise? And if you're not yet standing and you're proud of all of those who are standing, <laughs> or you want to join them in any of these wonderful activities, you please stand too. Won't you join with me as we say these words together? We're going to say it three times, getting a little louder each time. Religious school students, show everyone the way. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. Chazak, 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 v'nit chazek. With that strength, we will harness all of that strength and all of that joy and all of our pride and love, and we will bring it to to offer peace in the world, we conclude with Ose Shalom, which we sing together.
you and keep you. May God shine upon you and be gracious to you. face toward you and bless you with peace. 